Hey everyone, it's Evan here from The Trade Risk on Friday, June 23rd here with a weekend market recap video. We're gonna cover all the major markets, the current market environment, and then finish off looking at some sector analysis. Happy Friday, everybody. Hope you have a great weekend ahead of you. Uh, let's get into the markets here. Now, this will probably be a little bit shorter just because not a whole lot has changed, right? We did our usual midweek video on Wednesday of this week. That was this bar right here. And take a look in the S&P 500. We've gone uh, virtually nowhere over these past two days. So I don't think we need to go too in-depth into all of the analysis. The analysis we sort of talked about on Wednesday still applies. We're looking at the same levels we discussed on Wednesday. Day, but let's kind of button everything up and, and do that high level overview and, and sort of discuss where we are. So we finished up 13 basis points here on Friday, pretty much a nothing day. Uh, remember the SPY ETF here, if you're looking at that chart, still a little bit skewed to the downside just because of the recent ex-dividend. Um, if we go to the cash market, you can see a very similar picture. We're just kind of sitting at the upper end of this short term range rather than the lower end. Uh, as the s p or as the spy etf sort of depicts it so if we look here at the cash market you can see these past three days since wednesday uh, we've really gone nowhere Tuesday was the interesting day. That's the day we talked about in our in our last video here. And we said, if you're a short-term trader, if you're an active participant, this is probably a day where you, where you take some notice as the breakout from Monday to new all-time highs quickly uh, was reversed and failed. And we came back into this old range. Now, the important part so far, we have not gotten any follow through to that sell off, to Tuesday's sell off. We still have not seen uh, any uh, progress made by the sellers. That's typical of this market we've been in. We haven't seen much follow through to these downside moves uh, all of 2017. So that's where we are right now. This uh, we're still below this this 2442 level. That's still kind of the level I'm paying attention to. It's sort of the highs here from today, Thursday, and Wednesday, and then back here from early to mid June. So I'm still paying attention to that. We're still underneath here, but we haven't quite made a definitive move one way or the other. So I think heading into next week for you very active traders, the lows from Friday here, uh, which are again the lows from pretty much Wednesday as well, would be your very near term uh, support port, which if broken, we would look at this bigger level down here right around 2420. Uh, and then on the upside, it's this 2042, 2442. Um, if we get back above there, then all of a sudden this this kind of breakout uh, and potential continuation pattern is back uh, in in play to the upside. So those are those, those are sort of the, the the nearby levels we're paying attention to heading into next week. They should be pretty clear uh, from the longer term perspective. Here, uh, everything is is still kind of a green light. All systems go. Uh, let's go to the spy chart though uh, and take a look here. Over the past three weeks, take a look. We haven't gone anywhere. We got these sort of ominous looking three candles here, just uh, kind of you know clo opening and closing right uh, at those same levels, right at all time highs. Uh, you know. Does does this turn into uh, some type of topping, short-term topping pattern? Is this, you know, distribution happening in there? Um, it, you know, it's certainly tough to say. Looking at breath is a good way to sort of monitor that type of activity. And you know, we have seen a little bit of softening breath recently. Uh, most, and if you look at a sector basis as well, you can see, um, you know, some of the sectors are fairly sloppy here. Biotech now and healthcare have recently really picked up a lot of the upside uh, momentum. But many of the other sectors kind of lackluster as it stands right now. We'll talk more about them later. So something to pay attention. To, but again, um, nothing screaming, nothing very definitive. Advanced decline line still not doing a tremendous amount wrong. There's been a slight uptick in uh, net new 52 week lows happening. Uh, so, underneath the surface, you know, there's, there's some small warning signs, but again, nothing that's extremely alarming at this point, nothing that's, that's diverging uh, in a very large fashion. So, that's sort of um, all, all I really have to say on, on market internals. Um, but again, for you, bigger picture, uh, longer term players. Keep an eye on this. Again, these three weekly closes, the ranges we talked about are essentially the lows and highs of that. Um, as we start to move outside either the lower bounds or the upper bounds, expect a little momentum to sort of carry through. So that was uh, probably a longer rant than I was anticipating for the S&P 500. Let's go to the IWM, uh, which actually had... Um, you know, a pretty good uh, finish to the week here. You can see 
uh, if, if we're to draw this, this, this downtrend that is extending from the highs here that we made back on the 9th, you can see we're bumping up against this now. So it'll be interesting, does this turn into sort of a bigger picture channel breakout here uh, amidst, of course, this, this much longer channel that we've been kind of grinding higher in since December of 2016. So something to pay attention to here, we're up at the upper bounds. Maybe it's just a chance to sell and we're gonna kind of ping pong down here um, and fill out this bigger channel or maybe we get a more meaningful breakout there. Uh, tough to say at this point, volume low over the past few days. And, um, you know, again, we're going to need to see or, you know, it'd be, it'd be ideal to see some of these small caps uh, start to take the lead here and start to break out and merge to the upside. That would be uh, definitely a positive for the bulls. NASDAQ 100. Remember, this, this, this does have a lot of those big biotech names involved in here. And that's certainly what helped fuel this, uh, this index here to the upside this week. Finished up 2.24% on the week. So very impressive. And you can see we're starting to, based on the close here on Friday, looking like we want to break above uh, these highs here back from the four. 14th last week uh, and and basically get above say the you know nearly the 50% mark of this of this uh, big move down back on Friday the 9th so encouraging action there for the queues if we can hold this line and start to make continued progress hold that 20 period which now has just curled back up the 8 and 20 period so I think 140 is a very active kind of short term line in the sand if we started to lose 140 um, you know that that might be uh, your first sort of warning sign for you very active traders out there uh, to pay attention to it and and that could mean uh, you know we need more downside to, to, to happen before we continue higher but um, you know for now uh, trend is trying to resume itself back to the upside so that's the landscape all things uh, overall um, we got 4th of July holiday coming up. That's not next week, I don't believe. Uh, I have to look at my calendar. Yeah, I don't think that's next. That's that's the following week, so we still got some time on that. But, you know, expect that light volume summer trading to, to very quickly... Uh, you know, come into place. And we kind of saw it here late in the week. Uh, it was kind of boring action, stale action, all things considered. So uh, let's move into some other markets. TLT here, uh, finishing out the week near the highs, up 1.13% for the long bond. You can see here on the weekly chart, we're riding above an 8 and 20 period moving average. That's healthy. Uh, I like that emerging from this bigger base that we were in for several months. Uh, if you go back down to the daily chart, again, you get this big open gap that we're uh, just you know, kind of poking our head into now. This is um, the unadjusted chart for dividends. If you were to throw dividends on here, this would look a little bit differently. But um, you can see here we're, we're trying to get through into that gap. So far, bulls are holding. 8 and 20 period rising nicely. MACD kind of making new highs here. So uh, pretty encouraging action so far in TLT. We remain long this. Um, we remain long the TMV, which is the 3x levered, um, and we're continuing to just sort of uh, trail our position up with some of these fast-moving averages and, and sticking with the trend until you know until we get a reason to exit. So long TLT, looking for more. Um, GLD still not really interesting to me. Again, weekly chart, maybe got something developing here, a bit of a reversal happening, kind of probed lower for most of the week, finished near the highs, finished green right at the 20 period. I do like that, but still nothing, um, you know, nothing really jumping out on me here for GLD. Looks mostly sideways, kind of choppy, so not much else to do there. Silver, let's look at the weekly chart. Again, you get kind of that reversal look as well, where we probed lower for most of the week and then kind of finished flat, in this case, in SLV. Maybe there's something there at the lower ends of this, bound, uh, of this trend line that extends from late last year, but um, not seeing a whole lot there in the metals that um, I'm very much interested in at this point. Uh, if we go to oil, so this had a uh, minus 4% week, so this was a fairly significant move here in USO. Uh, you can see towards the end of the week on Friday, we did claw back just a little bit of that, but we got basically two inside days back to back from Wednesday. So does this turn into some type of uh, just, you know, inside uh, resolve that, that ends up uh, following through to the downside, or is this some type of reversal? Volume very light here on the past two days. So for me, my stance still belief uh, that you know sellers are in control here. Don't see anything that's changing that at this point. Um, are we? You know, could we bounce? 
you know, nice little oversold bounce to, to retest, you know, 925, sure. Uh, but structurally, this, this looks pretty damaged to me in a downtrend, so not something I would want to fight. Uh, and natural gas, we did talk about uh, for you tactical guys here, uh, 650 guys and gals. Uh, for this 650 level as we come back down to the March lows, February lows, uh, this would be a level to potentially pay attention to, look for some type of bounce. Um, again, kind, you know, mildly, not as damaged as, as USO, although this, this weekly pattern surely um, this kind of rounded weekly pattern here is not ideal. Um, but I think tactically, if we can hold this 650 and get a nice bounce going, uh, who knows, we might have some type of double bottom there. But again, nothing nothing high probability, nothing that super interests me there in UNG. I do like the spot, um, but... Um, you know, beyond that, uh, not that interested. So that I think covers all the major markets. Let's get into some of these sectors. And, and again, not really much has changed here. It's it's going to be mostly, you know, healthcare. I'm sorry, healthcare uh, that is just continuing to run away with it. MACD at new highs here. We had a, we had a little bit of a digestion here going on Friday inside session, but um, it's a runaway, you know, kind of breakout here to the upside. Are we a bit overbought? Sure. Could we pull back a little bit? That'd be healthy. Um, I would be interested in buying dips in this sector uh, on pullbacks. So XLV continues to work. IBB continues to work. You can see even managed to hold green today. Uh, nice uptick in volume, leading MACD. We looked at this weekly picture, which is pretty beautiful, 9.5% 9, 9 breakout this week. So that looks great. XBI, which is the equal weighted, 12% to the upside, uptick in volume, leading MACD. Uh, in fact, closed right near the highs of the week. So all things look good in biotech. Um, I, for one, did not uh, catch any of this really. Um, this this was a quick move that um, saw on this day, did not jump jump on board, and this train left without me. So I'd be looking at pullbacks, looking for the dust to settle here uh, and just paying attention to it. But um, looks, you know, certainly like, as we said at the top of the video, definitely the leadership group um, that has emerged recently. XLK I think is interesting here as well to pay attention to. Very similar to the Q's. Just remember the Q's got a lot of some of that biotech influence. You look at the XLK here, you can also see how it's um, it's trying to break through and break above this recent highs here. If we can hold this 20 period and start to retrace more of, two, uh, of this Friday's uh, down move here from the 9th, that's constructive. We have to pay attention. Can we get up, retest these highs? Does that happen on some type of negative divergence? And you know, does that create a larger range for us for technology going into summertime? That would make sense to me. Um, but again, let's take it one step at a time and see if we can even get back up there, take out the short-term resistance, and um, you know, uh, start to follow it in that manner. On the downside, uh, XLF actually a little bit of a surprise weakness here, or, or just continued weakness. I don't know if it's a surprise, but. Um, XLF continuing to kind of pull back here into this old zone that we were uh, kind of very heavily watching. I could probably redraw this a little more precisely, but this 24 to 2375 level, we'd really like, uh, you know, the, the, the bulls here in, in, in financial uh, space would like to see this hold pretty much right where it is. Don't want to see it come back more into this old range. That would be, um, you know, that wouldn't be the ideal bullish scenario at this point. So we do want to see a bid kind of come, you know, uh, step up here early next week. But for now, definitely, uh, you know, it is staying weak, a little bit of an uptick here in volume on Friday, but not too much to make of, of, of it. Um, but something to pay attention to, kind of getting to that inflection point. Uh, XLU also continuing to stay weak here. It's, it's back to these lows uh, from June, in fact, kind of closed below those lows from June. So it looks a little bit vulnerable here. It has sold off five or so days in a row. Um, so, you know, maybe it's due for some type of bounce. Maybe it's a bit of an overshoot here. Uh, but utilities, uh, notably weak. Staples, notably weak, almost back to this consolidation pattern. Uh, maybe that's a good thing, right? If some of these defensive areas are starting to uh, sell off while biotech is starting to pick back up. So you got risk on and then the defensive kind of off. Um, don't know, you know, we, we, we definitely, again, for, for reasons sort of already discussed, we want to see other sectors, not just biotech, work to the upside. That's why we're going to pay attention to tech and some of those other uh, sectors out there, um, but something to keep in the back of your mind. Finally, uh, XLY, this discretionary ETF, you could see, uh, was kind of... Um, you know, holding on to this this support right in here, right under ninety dollars, and whoop, you can see that. Um, let's see, why did we go all blue there? 
Oh, all right. Well, we're going to live with that as we're at the end of the video. Um, you can see we were holding on to this 89.75 level. We broke broke below it briefly and then um, you know got this bit of a reversal here potentially in the works on Friday. Again, not quite closing green, but um, something to pay attention to if this is some type of false breakdown and, and maybe we get a nice snapback heading into next week. So I'm not sure if why my screen's blue right now. Maybe the recording may not be picking that up. But it's the end of the video and it's the weekend, so have a good weekend. Thanks so much for watching. If you're new here, uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you like what we talk about. It's basically market updates like this, trade ideas, trading education, uh, and some new things coming down the pipeline. So uh, hope you stick around. Thanks for watching and talk to you guys next time.